Hi, and welcome to Cat Lapalosa's midterm presentation of Fra Filippo Lippi's painting, Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement. Fra Filippo Lippi was a Florentine painter of the early Renaissance. Born about 1406, he became a friar at age 16 where he began to develop a taste for the arts. He eventually left the monastery, but remained somewhat tied to his vows, taking on church commissions throughout Italy. Important works include his choir frescoes in the Prato Cathedral and Madonna with the Child and Two Angels, which many believe to be modeled after his most famous muse, Lucrezia Buti. Lippi is not known for his nudes. It is difficult to ascertain his artistic depiction of the unclothed body. Other nudes of the time, such as Masolino's Original Sin and Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, show slim figures with exaggerated features disproportionately long legs and torsos, light-colored, long-flowing hair, natural glows. These paintings display the humanistic idea of the body and its glorification, ideologies held fast during the Renaissance. Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement was completed in Florence, Italy in 1440. The exact reason for commission of the painting is unknown. The only nominal indicator is a coat of arms attributed to the Scolari family, and many assume the couple to be Lorenzo di Ranieri Scolari and Angiola di Bernardo Sapiti, married in 1436. Even before analyzing the image of the body and garment use, it is clear to the viewer how overpowering the figure of the woman appears. From the top of her headdress to her waist, she dominates the painting. Lorenzo projects only enough for us to see his facial features, his crimson doublet and cap, his hands folded with his ringed pinky finger resting on the Scolari coat of arms. Angiola is clearly the presiding figure, her profile emphasizing her features. Angiola's chemise can be seen at the neckline and wrists of her black, richly embroidered velvet dress with a pomegranate motif. Her dress sleeves are puffed to the elbow and fitted below. Her crimson houblon is made of fine woolen scarlet, lined with white fur, with a high V-shaped neckline pleating under the bust and openings on the sleeves to reveal her dress. The word lealta, meaning loyalty, is richly embroidered in gold thread and hangs down the left sleeve of the houblon. Her forehead is plucked high in the customary Florentine style of the time, her remaining hair pulled back into a richly decorated headdress called a cella. The scolari wealth is portrayed through the cella the best. The base is outlined with pearls and made of individual components that resemble scales or possibly feathers. The red-orange printed silk drapery is also elaborately decorated, dotted with pearls and floral motifs, and beaded in a cascading pattern down to a delicately fringed edge. One side hangs longer than the other, its length indiscernible to the viewer and therefore projects the scrollati wealth even more. Scholars at the Metropolitan Museum of Art consider these elements of Angiola's costume to be wedding garments because of their elaboration and the fact that Angiola wears a cella. Florentine women of the 15th century usually wore their hair free and loose, or with minimal coverage if they were married. Perhaps Lippi is alluding to an earlier time during the medieval period, when women wore henins, chaperones, and borelettes, much like a cella, a time where chivalry and loyalty were greatly prized and admired which could explain the embroidered lealta on the sleeve. The cluster of pearls at the middle of the cella, Angiola's pearl necklace, jeweled brooch, and series of jeweled rings also emphasize the wealth of the scolaris. Lippi is known for his attention to detail, especially here, from the sheen of the pearls to the cut of the jewels in her brooch. Angiola also layers her rings. Everything about her accessories exudes her wealth and station in society. Many suggest that this portrait was painted to commemorate an engagement or the birth of a child. However, according to Renaissance art historian Paola Tanagli, quote, portraits to commemorate an engagement or a wedding were most unusual in Florence during the 15th century, end quote. Besides, the Scolaris were married in 1436, and their child born several years after the portrait was painted. The rich fabrics, expensive jewels, and detailed background draw art historians at the Metropolitan Museum of Art to believe that Scolari wanted to display his wealth through the portrait. Still, this does not explain the size of Angiola in respect to Lorenzo, nor their unmet gaze. If he had wished to display his wealth to Florence, 
surely Lorenzo himself would have been depicted amongst his treasures, and the size of his property would have featured more prominently. It is possible for the portrait not to even contain actual living figures in Florentine society, but as an allegory of marriage, devotion, loyalty, and possibly even passages from the Bible. Portrait of a woman and a man at a casement is often linked to studies of gender in Renaissance Italy. Angiola's overpowering presence, dressed in what is possibly her most luxurious outfit, causes the viewer to be drawn directly to her. Take into account Lorenzo peeking through the casement, assumably from the outside looking in, and this becomes not only a portrait depicting the Scolari fortune, but stating exactly what belongs to him, his wife, his property. She holds up part of her hoopland, perhaps to display to viewers her acquisition of wealth, or to display the heaviness of the garment. Indeed, the combination of layers, heavy materials, and elaborate cella would make it difficult for a woman to move. If this portrait is about Angiola, it is her husband who wishes to say, this is my wife and this is her place. This is further reflected by the encasement of Angiola, as if to remind her only Lorenzo is allowed to travel outside of his domain. Another portrait exists by Lippi, entitled Lady, which features a similar Florentine woman posing almost identical to that of Angiola Scolari. The portraits are vastly different, however. The costume of Lady is not as elaborate, and the background does not feature as prominently as in a Scolari portrait. What is interesting is how the woman featured pulls on the garments she is wearing. She tugs on her sheer linen veil at the neckline, drawing attention to the delicate white work embroidery. She also pulls on her hoopla sleeve, revealing a similarly embroidered chemise. By having the woman posed as such, Lippi may have wished to emphasize her wealth through these tiny indicators of luxury dress. Lady was painted around the same time as Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement, and the eerie similarities between sitters, positions, and materials may prove Lippi used unknown models in place of actual subjects. It is also worth mentioning that Lady's costume looks more authentically of the period than Angiola's, evidence that Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement was more allegorical than actual. Another interesting comparison lies with a student of Lippi's, named Fra Carnavale, also known as Bartolomeo di Giovanni Corradini. The Birth of the Virgin, a genre-style painting, was completed 27 years after Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement. Even though the painting is meant to depict a religious scene, the figures are dressed in somewhat contemporary Florentine style. Two parts of the painting are striking in comparison to Lippi's work. The first features a group of women standing together in the front. Many of them hold up their hoopland to the waist. Is this for practical purposes? A display of wealth by showing how cumbersome the luxurious material can be? Did Carnavale derive this technique from Lippi, who features this fabric gathering in the Scolari portrait? The woman walking on the left side of the scene also raises some questions. She is dressed far more elaborately than the other women, and her garments are extremely similar to Angiola Scolari's, right down to the black embroidered dress, richly draped cella, and downward gaze. Perhaps Angiola's outfit was a prop in Lippi's studio that Carnavale used to inspire his subjects. The woman also appears to be the only one dressed in such a way. Further research might reveal her identity, perhaps a donor, that is linked to the Scolari family and Carnavale chose to dress her as such based on her past portrait. When searching for examples of Renaissance costume, portrait of a woman and a man at a casement is often referenced. Lippi's attention to detail in all aspects of his painting create what Renaissance experts believe to be an accurate portrayal of period costume. Although this may be true, it is certainly not the best example. Hints at allegorical references and possible use of models in place of actual patrons go against Lippi's credibility to depict authentic Florentine dress. For the most part, however, Portrait of a Woman and a Man at a Casement is a useful source for providing representation of costume in 15th century Florence, Italy.